Time.com medical columnist Zachary Mizell sparked a lot of buzz with his recent 10 Dangerous Places to Vacation piece. That article about the lack of high-level trauma centers near many of the country's most popular tourist spots was based on a larger mapping project by University of Pennsylvania researchers and the American Trauma Society. The Society's new interactive map shows those areas that are more than one hour away from high-level trauma centers. That golden hour is the most critical factor in survival for anyone who has just suffered a serious injury. And the online map has implications far beyond just tourist sites. We spoke with Dr. Brendan Carr of the mapping team about why such an online resource is so important. Without being too doomsday about it, we're all at risk for trauma. So if we're not all prepared, if we don't all have ready access to trauma care, maybe we can build a better system. The map's an important adjunct to that. It's helpful for us to see in space where people live and to contrast where people live with where the trauma centers are. The beauty of the map is that it's scalable. It's built with very small units of analysis. So just like we're all accustomed to in Google Earth or Google Maps, you can zoom down. You can zoom down in our map down to the level of something called a block group, which is a very small unit of geographic measure. It's 1,500 people or so. EMS providers say, well, when I zoom into my three counties, I know that. I, you're telling me what I already know. And then the other the perspective on that, the other half of the EMS community would say, you've given me, you've delivered to me this wonderful tool where I can now go to my policymaker. I can go to a Harrisburg or a DC and show a member of Congress, show um, a senator what uh, my, our territory looks like, our voting district, our state. And you've given me this wonderful tool to say, look at us compared to others. We aren't serving our, um, our voters as well as we might be. Um, next steps in the evolution of the map um, are in many ways sadly tied to um, funding streams and are tied to what is what will best benefit the population. Some of the important steps that we think is to start to show people the relationship in real time, the relationship between uh, stroke death and access to stroke care trauma death and access to trauma care. Um, and then demonstrating another piece which is to say how over time access has changed and how over time whether or not survival has changed as access has changed. And then the last piece which we don't quite have yet is the ability for a policymaker to on the fly create their own system. If I want to compare systems, if I know that I have this giant section of my state that doesn't have access to trauma care and I want to be able to, and I see the hospitals there as the base layer, and I want to convert one of those hospitals to a trauma center or I want to, I know that there is a, a helipad that does not have a medical helicopter and I want to site a medical helicopter on that helipad. In real time we want policymakers and systems planners to be able to do that and to be able to then say, huh, this is, this is the impact. I know that for me to add a, a, a helicopter to my system costs X dollars, and I know that my benefit for that is another 14% of the population has access to trauma care within an hour. We're not there to say whether or not that's right, how far the system needs to be pushed, but we'd like to create a tool that lets them in real time start to understand the impact of an intervention before they make it. What we do these days, what we do nowadays is we do what we think is right, and then we measure years later as the outcomes data is available what the impact on the system was. The current project is funded by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and the CDC um, was very interested in our dissemination campaign and very interested in understanding the impact of our, impact of our dissemination campaign. So many of the things that we've done, placing um, a paper in the scientific literature, we, we do measure what the impact to the web page is. We had an enormous, enormous bump in our web traffic in response to the Time article. Um, the one time that we, um, the only time that that was surpassed was when we previously had a, a high profile TV spot. The medium that we use to deliver the message to the public is vitally important. Engaging with the lay press, as we referenced before, the Time article made people very interested. We got lots and lots of emails from lots of people that never would have seen this in uh, an academic medical journal.